I think we should not just be thinking about great architects and iconic buildings. The real nitty gritty is going to be in the mundane technologies. It's things like light bulbs, the elevator, um, the air conditioner. These are the technologies that have actually been fundamental in shaping our cities. Imagine, what, for example, what our cities would look like if we didn't have the elevator. We wouldn't have any buildings much more than five stories high. Uh, if we were still lighting them with candles, uh, the large uh, multi-story buildings we've had would be a, a very different uh, uh, kettle of fish. Uh, air conditioning has made a tremendous difference uh, and has been, uh, in many ways, a source of maladaptation for cities because it's encouraged a homogenization of building design, particularly focusing on materials like concrete and glass with centralized HVAC, uh, which has really taken architects away from designing buildings to fit with the seasonal variation in climate uh, and weather patterns of particular places. One of the things we're interested in is actually how we can encourage architects to go back to, uh, to learn from the older technologies uh, that were well adapted to places, but to use modern ways to do this. There's a very long-standing technology in the Middle East called the wind tower, which is you have a tower which is above the level of the rooftops of, uh, of the city settlement. The wind that blows at that level is captured by the tower and blown down into buildings at street level below. Uh, so that's one example where you can see how we can actually go back to technologies that we've abandoned and learn how to reinvent them using very modern uh, materials and devices. Uh, there are some exciting things going on in the Netherlands at the moment, uh, where we're seeing certain uh, school of designers designing buildings on water. Uh, so uh, individual houses, office buildings, apartment blocks that would float. Uh, and they are conceiving of these as an alternative to the Netherlands' historic pattern of ha doing hard protection uh, of low-lying land through building dikes to build a much more flexible technology that's able to rise and fall actually on the water itself. Once again, uh, that's a case where you can see that they have learned from cases such as the Tonle Sap Lake in Cambodia, where you actually have historically floating villages uh, that have been built by people who are resource constrained and also constrained by the fact that the water level uh, of the lake around which they live fluctuates tremendously from one time of year to the next. So we can learn from the past using modern materials and, uh, and, and approaches.